If you've ever wanted to know how Alex Hormozzi got to practical celebrity status on social media as a business and marketing influencer, in this video I'm going to show you exactly how. And this is not my opinion, this is not my analysis, this is coming directly from him, from one of his courses. I'm going to give you the boiled down summary of it. So. Let's jump right in. So the first thing he says, brand is more important than anything. If you look at the people that are the most successful in the world, and he gives the the example specifically of Kylie Jenner, who became a billionaire at like 23 years old, it was because she had a big brand, because people knew her name. And one of the best ways to build a brand is by posting content. And content could be Twitter, it could be blogs, it could be YouTube, it could be a podcast. There are a whole bunch of different ways to post content. It's just something that people consume that you put out there. Now, content is scalable because a million people can watch the same piece of content. So this gives you the opportunity to, put in, to get put in front of a lot of eyeballs. Now, the, the other side of that is that you have a lot of competition. Right? There are a lot of other people out there that are also trying to compete for people's attention, trying to compete for people's eyeballs, and so you have to get good at it. You have to compete for that attention, but it is a skill that you absolutely can learn. Now, um, as he says, you get good by doing more of it, like most things in life. Just make content. You're probably going to suck at first. I certainly did. I'm, I'm still not amazing, but I'm getting a lot more comfortable than I used to be, and give me a year or two, I'm going to be a heck of a lot better than I am now. Now, uh, advertising is, or I'm, content is nice because it makes all other advertising more effective, right? If people know who you are, they know your name, they built a certain level of trust in you before, they have a reference for the things that you have to offer, then if you run paid advertising, it's going to be much more effective. And in fact, a, a really nice little strategy that you can do is you can run retargeting advertising on the same platform. So if you get popular on YouTube, for example, then you can send your ads specifically to the people who have already watched your YouTube content. So you're advertising essentially to a warm audience, an audience of people who already knows you. That gives you a big advantage. It makes it much easier to sell stuff. It costs time, not money. So depending on what your situation is, that might be a, a good thing or a bad thing. But um, you don't have to pay for it. So, so that's the upside there. <clears throat> now, every piece of content is made up of what he calls content units. And a content unit is just a hook, uh, retain, retention, and a reward. So you hook their attention, you get their attention in some way, then you retain their intention, by saying something interesting that they want to keep watching, and then finally you reward them. You satisfy their reason for consuming. So everybody clicks on something for a reason. They want to learn something, they want to be entertained, etc. So you have to reward them by teaching them the thing that they wanted to learn, or entertaining them, or making them feel happy, or whatever it is that they were looking to get out of that piece of content. So let's go into each of these three steps. Hook, retain, reward in more detail here. So in order to have a good hook, and again, the, the purpose of the hook is to redirect attention, you need a good topic. You need a subject material that is interesting to people. And he gives a few different, different ideas for subject material that works well. So far past, that's life lessons. The big mistake that I made when I was just getting into business, or how I lost 50 pounds uh, like trying some new diet. It's something that didn't just happen over the past couple of weeks, something that you learned in the past, in the far past. You can also do recent past. And what he recommends here is that you just like look through your calendar and see what is it that you've done over the last few weeks and what could you pull out of that that might be somewhat interesting, right? Did you take a sales call with a client where you could describe what you did on that sales call? Did you start doing a different type of workout, right? Or just anything that's, that might be interesting to people. Look at, because chances are you're doing something interesting with your life. And if you're not, then, <laughs> then you, you might want to change that. But just look at what you've done recently and see what might be interesting and what you could make content about. Next one is present. So what are you doing now? What is your current business strategy? What does your current workout look like, etc.? 
And then here's a cool idea that I just started implementing for myself. Oh, and by the way, this video is doing just that, right? I'm taking this course from Alex Hormozzi, and so I'm creating these videos, and I'm reading books and stuff, and if you go look on my YouTube, I've been recently, whatever I learn, I will make a video about for, for two reasons. One is it's good content and it's gonna help other people, but two is that it helps cement the ideas into my own mind, right? By teaching them to my YouTube audience, then I am reinforcing the ideas and so I remember them a lot better. So this is what I'm doing. I'm, I'm talking about the present, the things that I, I'm doing today, such as taking this course. So. Another way you can do that is tweet any interesting ideas you have. So if you wake up in the morning and you have a, a cool idea or you uh, think of something in a new way, which happens to me all the time, by the way, and I usually I never share it with anybody, but just make a Twitter post. Or, you know, if you're not into Twitter, maybe Facebook. But something that's, that's short, it's just a, a quick idea. It's not like a novel. And then you can look at when, when you do a bunch of short form stuff like that, then you can look at what got the most engagement, like what tweets got the most likes and the most retweets. And you can use those as, as ideas, as topics for your longer form content, like your YouTube. Now, uh, another thing that works well in, in terms of topic is a trend. So a trend is something that's, that's new and happening and everybody's aware of. So for example, AI is a big trend these days. If it's election season, then the election is a big trend. If there was something crazy happened with celebrities, like like Will Smith slapped Chris Rock, that's a trend, everybody's talking about it. Uh, so if it's something that you have expertise on or is it related to your topic, then make some content about it, make some commentary about it. Next is manufactured. So you're turning a crazy idea into reality. So this is pretty much 100% of what Mr. Beast does. He's like, I gave away $500,000 worth of cars for free. It's just like some, some crazy idea that he has that he decides to actually do and make a little mini documentary about it. So those are the different topic ideas. Now, the best way to pick topics, as he puts it, and this is kind of the very simplified version, do stuff and talk about what you did, right? That's it, do stuff and talk about what you did. Now, you want a good headline too, right? So you need a good topic, you also need a good headline, which is basically how you're framing your topic in your, and when I say headline, by the way, it, the content, it depends what the headline's gonna be. So if it's a blog, it's gonna be the title of your blog. If it's a YouTube video, it's the title of your YouTube video. If it's a tweet, you probably don't have a headline, right? Because it, it's only just a few lines anyway. So the, what the headline is exactly, it's just gonna be the first line of text that summarizes the thing. So he got these, these criteria from a study that was done on news headlines to figure out which news headlines got the most interest. And news headlines work the same way as a, a YouTube headline or an email headline or anything else. And the things that matter are recency. People wanna know about what happened recently. They wanna know relevancy. How is it relevant to them? If the person that's watching is a nurse, then they're gonna be more interested in something about nurses than something about accountants. Another one is celebrity. Were there celebrities involved in some way? Proximity, was it close to home? If there was an earthquake in your town, that's gonna be a lot more interesting to you than if there is an earthquake on the other side of the world some, somewhere. Conflict, opposing ideas, people, etc. So by the way, remember that, that trend I gave you about Chris Rock and, and Will Smith getting into a conflict? Well, look at all of that, that's, that's conflict, it's also celebrity, and it's also recency at the time. Now it's kind of old, nobody's talking about it anymore. But you see how these, oh, and it's also unusual, right? The celebrities don't usually slap each other at award shows. So these are, um, and I'll get to that in a second, but notice if you think about what were the big headlines recently, or what were the things that got your attention, think about how they fit to this. Anyway, so conflict always gets attention. 
So, so such a person is talking trash about this person. This person got in a fight with this person. Uh, think about all these like YouTube boxers that are that are Jake Paul is fighting KSI or whatever. It, it, even if you never heard of Jake Paul or KSI, just the fact that there's a conflict, it just gets people's attention. Um, unusual is kind of self-explanatory, something that doesn't happen very often. And ongoing, so this is something that's still in progress, something that's happening now. If you think about when there was when there's a big a big natural disaster for example and they have a and this is kind of morbid but they have like the count of of damage and how many people died in the natural disaster and the count keeps going up as they find more and more people and they they the news is constantly keeps going with the same thing because it's happening now and and you never know what's going to happen right it's there are still developments coming out. So that's how to write a good headline that people are likely to click on. And then finally, you want to put it in a format that people like, format that your audience likes. And a lot of times this is platform specific. So if you're doing YouTube, what's the type of headline or what's the type of video or what's the type of thumbnail that people are normally used to clicking on on YouTube? Versus on TikTok, it's going to be a little different. On Instagram, it's going to be different. On Twitter, it's going to be different. So figure out what is working on the particular platform that you're using and copy that format. Don't copy the, the content, just copy the format, the way that it's presented. So that's it for the hook. Now, next part is retain. You want to keep people watching or keep people reading as long as possible. And so the best way to retain is through curiosity. You want people to wonder what's, hap what's going to happen next. And there's three particular ways of doing that. He says list, steps, and stories. So a list is five ways to, to surprise your lover on Valentine's Day. You know, five different business ideas or just a, a number of things that are not really necessarily in any particular order, but are ideas of something. And the way, the reason that this works is because you want to know what the other ones are. Okay, so I've seen numbers one, two, and three, but I want to see what number four is also. Steps are similar, but steps are the process in order to do something. So the 10 steps to starting a successful business in real estate, right? You're not going to get the full process unless you watch all of the 10 steps. And then also stories. Stories are really good for engaging people. Uh, talk about yourself, talk about somebody else, talk about a story that you made up, right? The story can be imaginary. Think about how many fictional stories people are absolutely obsessed with. And he gives the example specifically of Star Wars and Lord of the Rings. How many, of, how many people are completely obsessed with those stories even though they know that none of that is true? It's just made up. It's a story, so it's engaging. And it keeps people retained because people want to know what happens next in the story. And you can use all three at the same time, right? You can have a, a list of steps and you can have the story about how you did every step or how you messed up the step and, and screwed yourself up in some way. So that's how you retain people. And then finally, how you reward people, or why you want to reward people, first of all, is that it gets people to trust you, right? If you say that, hey, I'm going to show you how to do X, Y, Z, and then the person watches your video or reads your blog post and they don't learn how to do X, Y, Z, well, now you've lost trust, right? You made a promise and you didn't keep it. So you have to keep your promise. You have to make people think, wow, that was valuable. I'm glad I watched that thing because then they are going to come back and watch more from you. They're gonna like you, and if you sell stuff, they're more likely to buy from you. So he says value, er, measure your reward in terms of value per second, right? Don't make the person watch an hour just to get to the thing that you promised them. Try to give as much value as you can in the littlest amount of time. There's no such thing as too long, just too boring. And this is something a lot of people complain about, myself included, I've complained about this in the past, that people have very short attention spans. Well, he says that no, people don't really have short attention spans. And the, the reason we know this is because, well, one reason is because people will binge Netflix series 
like crazy. They'll spend hours and hours and hours watching the same thing. They have an attention span. It's just your content has to be good enough that people are willing to sit through it. And people's standards for what they are willing to stick, sit through are getting higher and higher and higher because people are getting better. There's more competition. The standard of quality of information or quality of content keeps getting higher. So you gotta not be boring. You can increase the ro reward by hooking the right audience with the proper headlines, topics, and formatting. So you want to have a topic and a headline and a format that is desirable or interesting to the person that you want to talk to. So if you're a person that is looking to watch cat videos and be entertained, then you're probably not going to click on this video that I'm presenting right now. Right, so if I have an audience of people that like cat videos and here's a, business, a, a video about how to create content, well, chances are it's probably gonna flop because it's not a match with my audience. You increase reward by retaining them with lists, stories, and steps like we talked about, and by satisfying the reason it hooked them in the first place. Right, people start watching something because they're expecting some benefit from it. They're expecting to laugh, they're expecting to be entertained, they're expecting to learn something, they're expecting to make more money, to know something about losing weight, whatever it is, you gotta deliver on the thing you're promising. Here's how to know if your content is good. Number one, most important thing, the audience likes it. Right, ultimately, it's not up to you whether the content is good, it's up to the audience. If it's good content, your audience will grow. Right? If people like what you have to offer, then they'll want more. They'll want to come, they'll want to click on your, your new videos as they come out. You'll know if it's good if you're providing more value than anyone else, and if you satisfy the, pro the promise in the hook. Now, there is short form versus long form content. So you can think of short form like a tweet or like a YouTube short or an Instagram reel or a TikTok, whatever you call it, short video. That's short form, whereas long form could be a blog, it could be a podcast, it could be a longer YouTube video. And uh, long is basic, long and short are, are, they're all made out of, made up of content units. If you remember the content unit we talked about, it's just hook, retain, reward. A long form is just a bunch of content units. So you hook, retain, reward, hook, retain, reward, hook, retain, reward over and over and over again for a longer time period. Whereas a short form is fewer content units. So it might be just a single sentence tweet. It might just be one hook, retain, reward. So he recommends that you start with short because it's easier. It's easier to, to get one good content unit or a few good content units and, and put them together rather than say an hour long video. Right, because if you have an hour long video, you might get a couple of good content units in there, but if the rest of them are boring, then people aren't gonna sit through your video. And one final tip is make all your content for strangers. That is, keep make it so that you are have a stranger in mind, somebody who does not know you, who does not know who you are. So don't allude to previous videos that you did without explaining. Don't assume that people know your life story. If that's relevant to the video, then you want to explain it again. And your existing audience, the people who do know your life story and do know your older content, they're not gonna be offended because you said it again. Um, but if you, if you will make your content for strangers, of course, that's what brings, that's what caters to the new audience, the new listeners, and that's what grows your audience faster. So I hope you found this helpful. If so, please let me know, leave me a comment, hit, hit like, and subscribe to my channel if you want more like it.